we're gonna start off by jumping into the R7 head. Now what most guys, most guys don't know, if you haven't bought anything in the last, what, two years, you don't know that we made a change to the head. Originally we had an R2 for a while, which was a really fast head that, that sped up really fast, and we had our R3, more versatile head, a head that they could knock a little harder. It's normally on our monobooms. Um, you can throw weights in it, make it, it's a very versatile head, big head though. It was quite a bit longer than, than the R2. Last year we did a full redesign into the R7. So R7 is the best of both worlds. And once again, if you haven't purchased in the last couple years, you won't even know that we had this head. So it's a little shorter head, but it has the durability and the adjustability of the R3. So you can stack weight in it, right? You, you can really, you can hit a tree as light as hard as you want. So it's super versatile. Like I said, this last season from three year olds to 25 year olds, we we're out shaking. I didn't, I didn't adjust. I ran right around 1300 PSI uh, in plant pressure and ran everything, thankfully because of the air pads, which we're gonna jump into here. So I just wanna share that it's a super versatile head. It's a super durable head and we've made some changes. Kevin, why don't you come in here and talk about maybe the, uh, the pump and, and some of the, the support mounts that we've, we've done. So we went from an 80cc motor to a 94cc motor, which helps get your your shake up to speed faster um, with more with more torque. Um, also, we ch changed the head hangers, uh, went from the multi-angle uh, hangers to more of a house style hangers. So you have a lot less issues with those. Um, also, we did a couple things different to uh, the hinge pin um, and change, we had to go to a different belt. Uh, and that's pretty much all the changes we made on. So one, one thing you mentioned on hangers, and Brian's going to jump in here and say something also. You know, previously, uh, we weren't getting full welds all the way around. And now, if you can see, you will be able to see, most like I said, we'll show this a little clearer later, but the welds are getting welded completely around the hangers. So durability and cracking out, those things have been adjusted. And once again, that was feedback from growers. We made those changes. And then the bigger motor, as Kevin said, just more torque, Kevin, more torque. So it speeds up a lot faster. You get a shock to the tree a lot, lot quicker, and uh, it, it, like I said, it, it was a, just a hell of a shaking machine this last year. Also, it changed the pins where you are hold, holding them in on the side by bolts instead of having the pins go through and bolting them on top. Uh, one other thing that, that seems to not get talked about enough is right now we are the only shaking company in the industry that has external greasable bearings. Now. For you, what that means is easy serviceability and, 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 and just quick access to getting in. You know, normally you got a pull, there's a back plate back here. Most bikes, we'll kind of show you some of this stuff later, but there's a back plate back here. Normally you got to pull that off to get in there and grease the bearings. Now, right on the top of the head, you can grease the top of the head and the bottom of the head and push grease completely through those bearings and you're right back into the field. So just less likely that you're going to miss those serviceable items. That's one more time, one more thing that we've done to just increase serviceability and durability for you guys. And then up, everything gets done more when it's easy to do. Brian says everything gets done more when it's easy to do. That's how we get. That's pretty handy. I like that. Uh, can we see the air pads? Okay. Yeah, we got a good view of that. Okay. So this seems to be super controversial, but right? not on our side. You know, currently on our side. 99, Brian, 98% of people that buy OMC? Would you say buy air packs? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So so at, out of hundreds of machines a year, thousand machines over time, you know, 99, 98% buy the air packs. And, and the question is always why? And I'm gonna break this down later in a, in a more detailed video. We have a broken down uh, pad display. But the, the biggest, biggest reason is is the air pads are a smaller subset of rubber versus a standard rubber donut pad. And as me and Brian talked and the engineers talked, you know, one thing that's known for sure is rubber, rubber is an isolator. So rubber is, to, is built to reduce vibration. Think about any engine, right? Always rubber isolator. So the more rubber you have, the less shape that you're gonna be able to transfer, less energy you're gonna be able to transfer. And if you look inside those donuts, those rubber donuts, they usually have about this much room uh, 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 to, uh, to be able to crush down and create a pocket. Well, once that, that's taken up, now the rubber's pushing back. And we talk about barking trees. No one wants to bark trees. No one wants to create that, that you know, everybody hates that. You want to talk about damaging trees or causing problems. The, it's, we have guys that specifically ask for, whether it's custom shape or companies, 
for for the uh, air pads the air pads because they're known for barking less trees. And the reason for that is once again it's a smaller, and I'll, we'll show this later in a more detailed video. It's a smaller circular pad that has less rubber on it, and then it's filled with this nylatron fill. So it's kind of like a sandbag to, to the fact that it now it's just going to create a natural pocket around that tree. It's able, almost able to choke the tree. So we need less pressure to hold onto a tree, and we're able to transfer more energy because we're not losing the shape in the tree. Um, you, you can see me okay? Yes sir. yes, sir. Any questions? No questions. I'm running through fast, guys. If you have questions, let me know. Um, the other thing that we do is the number one killer of rubber, any rubber, is heat. And the, the uh, sorry, I got Kevin Schutzman sneering at me behind the screen. Don't do that again. Sidetrack. <laughs> <laughs> He's whispering him in my ear. <laughs> uh, the number one killer of rubber is heat. And that is the point of the air. So a lot of people, like I said, we talk about this all the time. We have an air pump, and we'll show you guys that here in a little bit. But we, we blow air constantly through these rubber pads. And we call these the diffuser right here. We'll be able, like I said, we'll show you some examples of that. It's a, 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 a steel insert with a bunch of holes in it. And we have it on both sides. So we have it on this side with the swivel, where the airline runs in, runs through the pad and the nitrotron. So it's constantly blowing out that hot air, that hot air exchange, and it's blowing it out here. Okay, so we're able to run our pads quite a bit cooler than, uh, well, than anybody. And not only can we uh, do that with air, but we've also started water injecting also. And no, so now, air pads is always been an option. If you don't like the air pads, no problem. We can do rubber donuts. But if you want to upgrade, which most potency customers do, you get the air pads and then you get the water injection pads also. So the water's tapped into the airline, runs through the pads, through the nylatron, and then out of the pads, expels the heat, gets rid of the heat. Thank you, thanks guys. All right. So here we got, I'm gonna bring it up to you, and hopefully Brian will guide me. We've got a diffuser right here. Can you see that okay, Brian? Yep. Perfect, focus. So you can see this is what's on the end of the pads, and this plugs into the pad, and then allows the air to go through the pad, but the nylatron not to escape the pad. So. It, it, it's been absolutely awesome. Like I said, out of every machine we sell, about 98% buy it because they know it works. Um, some customers come from competitive lines. If you don't want it, you don't have to have it. You know, it's whatever you want, whatever you choose, but we believe in it, we know it works. Um, we have customers that specifically request it, but that's it. Turning the pads, very simple on the old side. Oh, I was gonna say, we, we actually have a question. Oh, it question. Says, and is, do you rotate the pads? Some people do and some some people don't. Yeah, great so, question. Who, who asked that question? Let's go um, right in. Unless it's Ethan. A, unless it's a friend of mine, I don't. E Ethan, 18. Ethan, Ethan, good question. So yes, we recommend that you always rotate the pads. Um, we recommend at the end of every row, which usually is about in 30 minutes, customers do different things. Customers, you know, approach it in a different way. Um, I can show you how to do that, but we'll probably do it on another video. Uh, but basically, I think I've shown that on another video. Yeah. But basically, yeah, you spin, pull the pad out a little bit. What's nice is we don't have to completely take the pad out on the, the rounds. And we have a tool, or you can use a wrench, and turn the pad quarter turn is what we recommend. You know, a round pad is just like a tire. And the more you rotate and take care of that tire or that pad, the longer life you're going to get out of it. So that's something we definitely recommend is that you rotate the pads. You keep on it. Otherwise, it's always going to wear. If this was the pad, it's always going to wear on this point. And the moment that point is worn out, you're going to blow out a very expensive pad, which is not what you want to do. But you continually quarter turn it. And then what I recommend to customers at the end of the season, you flip the pad because the pad's the same on both sides. And now you're you know you're just evenly wearing that pad. So there you go. Thanks, Joe. Good. Well, that about does it for the R7. I don't know if I can miss anything, guys. I think you covered it. Um, once again, new, if you, if you haven't seen them in the last couple of years, it's new, completely redesigned, completely new shape pattern. I didn't think I said that. That's accurate, correct? Yeah. yeah. I can make sure. Sometimes things get changed and I don't know. But completely new shape pattern. Uh, it's really, if you do have an R7, watch the, watch the shape pattern in slow-mo. Just a little fun, fun fact and tip there versus some of the other machines. Um, and like I said, redesigned head, durable head, robotically robotic or welded head, uh, just overall durable. It's an absolute beast. Everyone I took, every competitive 
shaking uh, demo I took it to, it absolutely just outperformed. So if you haven't seen it, you need to see it. But awesome head.